put aside the world outside for a while and focus on the world inside. What have you got here? You've got the body, particularly you've got the breath, you've got feelings, and you've got the mind. You want to bring those all together in a way that is nourishing for all three. Take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the, the breathing in the body. Some aspects of the breathing will be more obvious than the others. Focus on the areas that are most obvious, or the ones that you feel most sensitive to. There's a spot in the body that you usually use to mark when the breath has come in enough, now it's time for it to go out. Now it's gone out enough, it's time to come back in. Find that spot. And if there's any tension or tightness around it, let it loosen up. This way the breath immediately relates to feelings, which you begin to see don't just come and go. You do things to induce them. There are certain limits to what you can do. This has to do with past karma. But within the limits of what you got here, you want to make the best use of what you got. As for the mind, is it willing to stay here right now? Sometimes if it's not staying, it's the problem is with the breath or with the feelings. Sometimes it's just with the thoughts going on in the mind. Things left over from the day. And if you find there's a lot of leftover stuff, sort through it a bit. From the Buddha's point of view, think of what the Buddha would have to say about the issues that are coming up in your mind right now, how he might advise you to take a larger view and let them go. So you're ready to get back with the breath. What you're doing here is creating what they call a state of becoming. Now becoming is a sense of a particular world of experience and your identity in that world. Right now you're the meditator, and the relevant world is the world of your body right here, and your awareness of the body. This world is based on a desire, the desire to get the mind to settle down, to find some peace in the present moment. And based on that desire, you have to adjust things. You adjust the breath, you adjust your thoughts, you adjust your feelings. All that's called fabrication. It's how we create our inner world. It's how we create our outer worlds as well. And this is one of the reasons why getting the mind in a good state of concentration like this with a proper understanding is such a good laboratory. We look at the world outside and it seems pretty confusing. We say, how did I create this? We didn't create everything, but you created your experience of it. And the problem is that worlds don't just sit there, they move. And you don't just sit there either, you move too. You find that you can't stay in a particular world and you move on to another one, another one. Because the mind is constantly trying to find some place to stay. And sometimes it's doing it out of desperation, sometimes it's feeling threatened. So it tends to piece things together pretty quickly, pretty haphazardly, not knowing what it's doing. Which is why we find ourselves in situations that we can't imagine why we got there, or how we would have wanted to be there. Well, we, we didn't want to be there. Our desires were pointing someplace else, but they were confused. So we're trying to learn how to do this process with more knowledge and more skill. At the same time, in creating a sense of concentration like this, it does give you a place to step back out of other worlds. You notice this very clearly as you get distracted by something. It's, you're in another world. There's kind of a blacking out and you're someplace else. But you remind yourself, hey, I'm meditating, and you can pull yourself back. You've got another place to go. A place that's more solid, that's not collapsing around you all the time. There is some impermanence here, some inconstancy. 
but relative to a lot of other things in life, it's, this is pretty constant. It allows you to put down your guard a bit. As the Buddha said, settle in. Indulge in the pleasure of the concentration, because the mind needs that sense of pleasure. Otherwise, it's going to go out and start looking for other things to wolf down. So allow the sense of pleasure to develop and let it spread throughout the whole body. See if you can get it to spread some to some places you haven't been thinking about for a while, areas that you might tend to forget. This is why it's good to have a systematic way of going through the body as kind of a checklist. But even those systems can miss some things. So cast your eye around and see what needs to be soothed in the body or energized in the body, relaxed in the body. So this is a good place to stay. You're going to try to move into this world, and it's like moving into a house. You want to make it a home, a place where you can feel at your ease. And while you're doing this, you learn a lot about how the mind builds homes. That was the Buddha's image. After his awakening, he realized he had a house builder in his mind that kept on building new houses, new houses, new houses, and the old houses collapsed and moved into a new one. In the final awakening, he realized he'd reached a state where it wasn't built and it wasn't going to collapse. He didn't need the house builder anymore. And it's a useful image to apply to your life, to see how you're building houses. Are you building them on sand? Are you building them on solid rock? What are they exposed to? Because some houses are exposed to more danger than others. It's another one of the reasons why you want to have a good place inside, because it's a lot less exposed. And at the same time, you can see more clearly this process how you fabricate things, what thoughts, what feelings, even what physical sensations you tend to latch onto, and what you create out of them. And you learn to do it with more knowledge, more finesse. I think about samsara, an image that springs to mind is a, one of those cartoons where Bugs Bunny is in a train going over a big railroad trestle over this huge chasm. And as the train goes along, the, the trestle is collapsing behind him. So he's got to keep going and going and going. Where it gets different is that the, the part of the trestle ahead of him is already there. Whereas we're going through life, some of the things that we're going to be running into are already determined, and a lot of things are not. We're scrambling to make the train track ahead of us, hoping that it'll reach the other side. And all too often, we do it with a degree, inversion, delusion, envy, jealousy, all kinds of unskillful mind states, along with that sense of being threatened by the collapse of things behind us. So we tend to do a shoddy job, which is why we find ourselves in worlds that we would not like to be in. So here we have a chance to get a better sense of how the mind fabricates things. Again, it's not total world creation. In other words, you can't create something out of nothing. You've got raw material coming in from past karma, which sometimes places some pretty severe limitations on what you can do. But you always have the choice to do something skillful. That choice is always there. Simply that we're latching on to other things that make us push the skillful alternative aside. So if you give the mind a more solid place like this, you can do your work with a lot more clear vision, 
lot more patience, but at the same time be more efficient in how you put together the right way to be in a particular world. So even though you're in some situations where there's going to be a lot of suffering, a lot of problems, you don't have to suffer. There may be pain, but you don't have to suffer from the pain. And this puts you in a better position to help yourself and other people, too. Because if everything in your life is going up in flames, you're trying to help somebody else who's going up in flames. Sometimes you just add more fuel to the fire. But if you're in a cool and a safe place, you can pull those other people out to whatever extent they want to be pulled. So this is not a selfish process. I mean, our worlds intersect. And so the way you create your world, if it's done with skill, will have a good influence on other people. So we're here to get to know this aspect of the mind that's building houses, building railroad trestles. We have better and better places to move into until eventually we get to that part of the trestle, where the trestle reaches the other side. That's when we're safe. Until then, that's going to be collapsing behind us. Even as we sit here and meditate, things are collapsing behind us. The worlds we've been in the past, they're gone. We have to look at what world we're creating right now and what worlds are going to be on into the future. As the Buddha said, we're all, we're all on a path. Each of us is on a different path. And they have their destinations, and all too often we don't realize what the destination is. I mean, some people get themselves on the path to the lower destinations, and they haven't chosen that destination, but the path they've chosen is going to take them there. And it's out of ignorance that they're, they're headed in that direction. This is why it's good to have the Dharma, to give us a clear sense of what paths there are in the world and what kind of actions lead in what direction. So we can choose widely and construct something that will take us to safety. <laughs>